Hello, everyone. My name is Peter Estrada Ledesma, and my presentation will be on the inner workings of ambient intelligence. So for the agenda today, I will give a quick overview of the objective of ambient intelligence, discuss an important distinction that has to be made, talk about the framework of ambient intelligence and some of the driving features. Then I will give a quick overview of what was covered and my personal opinions. So what it is supposed to be. Ambient intelligence has a lot of potential in the technological world, uh, but its goal is to create an environment where manual inputs into electronic devices will no longer be necessary. The environment adapts to the person's needs by analyzing their behavior and thus trying to predict their intention through sensors and processors. So why is this text in different colors? Well, this blue and the green text are combined to make a definition of ambient intelligence. <clears throat> combined, of course. But right now what we have isn't actually true ambient intelligence. Right now, most of the technology that we have that would be considered ambient intelligence only checks this blue text. Let me explain. So the important distinction is between true ambient intelligence and not true ambient intelligence. What we have nowadays would be say, uh, say like an automated door at a supermarket. If you stand near it, the door will sense you and it will open automatically. So there is the first point of the definition which is that there is no manual input and an, ac an action is taken by the device itself, right? So in these automated doors, what we have right now is that as long as you're near the door, the door will sense you and it will open. Perfect. But it doesn't actually cover the second part of the definition, which is that the system has to analyze your behavior and predict an intention and then commit an action, right? So let's say you have automated doors, right? But let's say that it actually has a complex system where it can read your behavior and predict your uh, intention. So in this case, in true ambient intelligence, in this case, if you walk to the door, right? But you stop before you exit because say you're talking to someone inside the store. The door, the system, will be able to read your behavior and analyze the fact that your intention isn't to walk through the door. So in this case, even though you are near the door and the sensors can sense that you're there, they don't open because they know that your intention isn't to walk through the door just yet. Then say you finish your conversation, you are now walking again towards the door, and in this case, then it will open because now it is able to read your behavior and from your behavior, predict the fact that you are now going to go through the door. So that is the important distinction between true ambient intelligence and not true ambient intelligence. And to be honest, we don't have true ambient intelligence just yet, or at least not that I'm aware of, because most devices such as your lights turning on, they don't really analyze your behavior and predict your intention or your intention yet. All they really do is using sensors, as long as anything, it doesn't even have to be human, as long as something uh, touches upon those sensors, they will turn on the lights or, you know, open the door. But we can still consider them ambient intelligence because there is no manual input for an outcome to be uh, seen. But for the, this presentation, for the purpose of sticking to, to the true definition of ambient intelligence, we will be going with that true uh, definition where the system has to analyze the human behavior and thus predict an intention. So what we see in this technology is a framework of sensing, reasoning, acting, and interacting. So sensing, of course, senses through um, cameras, sensors, microphones. Then it sends that data to reasoning, which is where it anal the system analyzes some sort of behavior and comes up with a, <clears throat> a predicted uh, intention of the human and thus 
gives orders to some sort of action to do something and that's where the acting takes place and of course it has to interact with people so let's take let's say that there's a burglar in coming into your house sensing would be your cameras being able to sense that there's somebody in there and say you have uh, cameras that do facial recognition right and it does not recognize the person that's in your house this goes to reasoning the data is that there's somebody in there it isn't able to recognize that it's somebody that's supposed to be in there so it reasons some sort of action and which takes place in acting say it calls the cops because now it reasoned that it is a burglar somebody that shouldn't be there so it calls the cops, but now it goes into interacting because it has to interact with you, letting you know that there's somebody in your house that wasn't supposed to be there and by giving you a message or a warning. So as we can see that these are four main parts, the four main parts of immune intelligence, right? They're uh, sensing, reasoning, acting, and interacting. And even though they do all happen or tend to happen, it, some parts are more important than others. They're a little bit more visible, specifically the sensing, reasoning, and acting. There are a few features that uh, encompass ambient intelligence. The four main ones, or rather the most general ones, would be uh, human computer interaction, HCI, Internet of Things, IoT, context awareness, context aware computing, and machine learning. There are a few others, but I want to stick to these four core ones for now. So what is human computer interaction? Well, that is the portion of the system that is responsible for communication between the system and people. Specifically, say uh, when a machine wants to learn about a person or rather when it's monitoring a person, it reads their behavior through cameras, sensors, microphones. And then it converts all of this into data for the system to have, right? So in this example, people are, communica people are communicating with machine, right? They are doing gestures, they're doing signals that the computer is able to uh, recognize and read as data. But then we also have the fact that machines have to communicate with people. HCI is also responsible for this, of course, but it does more so in messages and warnings, right? So when machines collect data from people, it's through gestures and sensors and microphones and any other communication symbols. When machines interact with people, it's through messages and warnings. So. HCI is a pretty crucial component of ambient intelligence responsible for the communication between people and computers. But once that data is accumulated, once that data is accumulated, it needs to be passed through devices. And that corresponds to Internet of Things. Internet of Things is an interconnectedness of devices in an environment that are constantly gathering and sharing information with one another. So once we have the data read by the HCI, read by, uh, from you know, human behavior through sensors and cameras and whatnot, IoT, Internet of Things, shares that information through a network, through, uh, through uh, devices, right, so that the system can analyze it and then uh, send back feedback, uh, actions and feedback to other devices that are connected. So HCI and, and Internet of Things really go hand in hand. While HCI connect, uh, gathers behavior, behavioral data from humans, a Internet of Things sends it across the network. So then we have an important part which is context awareness computing. So this is a portion of the system that computes scenarios 
based on variables, on context variables, because as we know, it is very, very important to know the context of a situation, right? We need, and this portion of the system reads environment and people's uh, variables that are important to understand the situation. These variables are stored and then later uh, used to analyze a situation, a scenario, to finally come up with an action. So if this was confusing, let me clear it up with an example. So say we have lights in our backyard, right? So these lights have sensors that uh, as long as they sense you, they will turn on. But the thing about lights is that we don't really need them if it is bright outside. Otherwise, they wouldn't really do much, right? So a context variable would be how bright the environment is already. If it's bright and the, uh, the sensors on the lights, they sense you, well, in this situation, because of the context that it's bright outside in the environment, the lights wouldn't turn on because it, it wouldn't be that useful, right? But let, now let's say that it is dark outside. So that's a context variable. The environment is dark. And now you walk outside and the lights sense you. In this case, the lights would turn on because due to the context of the, situa of the environment, of the situation, it is beneficial to turn on the lights. Now, in these, like, this exact same example, now let's say though that you have night vision goggles for whatever reason. In this situation, the context is that you have night vision goggles and the brightness of the environment. Let's say that the environment is dark, right? Typically, if you walk outside and the sensors sense you, the light would turn on because it's dark outside. But the context is that you have night vision goggles, which typically only work in the dark. So according to this context of the situation, the lights wouldn't turn on, even if it's dark outside. And even if the lights sense you, the lights would not turn on because it able to understand that you have night vision goggles and thus your intention is probably to be able to use them which of course wouldn't really work once the lights turn on right so this portion of computing of the system takes into account uh, context of the environment of you and it uses it to analyze this situation to then come up with an action to commit so it's a very important part of the system of ambient intelligence, being able to read all of these contextual variables that are crucial. But the main force that drives ambient intelligence would be machine learning, of course. It is one of the concepts of um, technology that, uh, that has machines learn through experience by using data to become more accurate with, with predicting and analyze, analyzing scenarios, far more than what they were initially programmed to do because they learn. So we really, that, that really falls within the area of ambient intelligence, right? Because what ambient intelligence is trying to replicate is human, human uh, knowledge of what they can see their surroundings in, right? Like from the previous example, with the, uh, the lights and the night vision goggles, a human would very clearly be able to see, oh, that guy has night vision goggles and it's dark outside. It is a perfect environment for him or her to use their night vision goggles. So I'm not gonna turn on the lights. But this sort of thinking is harder for machines. But with machine learning, it learns through experiences. And uh, as it grows, as it expands its, uh, uh, it's the database, it can handle more cases, more scenarios, and better or more accurately predict the human intention based on the behavior, on the variables that it sees. So it is a very, very uh, strong force driving ambient intelligence. So the conclusion, ambient intelligence is a, uh, it's, it's a continuously growing uh, area of topic in the community, scientific community. And 
even though it's still in its developing phases, which means that there's still a lot of ways to uh, cover ambient intelligence, right? To build this system. But I try to cover the most general or basic uh, features and frameworks of how it would uh, work. Of course, uh, there's many other ways and there was many other features, but I tried to touch upon the uh, main ones. I covered what the framework of ambient intelligence looks like and of course the driving features. And I really hope for this technology to continue to grow specifically to be used in other areas, right? Not just in homes, but say hospital someday, because I feel like they have a lot of potential to help humans. And yeah, that is my hope for the future of ambient intelligence. Uh, thank you. If you have any questions, please email me. Uh, this is my bibliography. And that is all.